Hello to you all and welcome to the Irish in the UK. This week we're in Alfreton near Derby celebrating Jack Fleming's birthday. We're at Parknahairn in Birmingham for the Warwickshire GA Senior Football Championship Final between Sean McDermott of Birmingham and Roger Casements of Coventry. But first off, we're off to Manchester for the Marian Procession Walk in honour of our Blessed Lady. Father Tom, tell me a little bit about the Marian procession that's taking place here today. Well, about 10 years ago, me and Father Farrell from St. Joseph's uh, in Plymouth Grove decided we need to do something as a public witness, especially in a very prominent Muslim area. So we decided to have a procession with the Statue of Our Lady. And uh, in doing so, we discovered that the Muslims joined in the procession because they had a devotion to Mary as a patron of childbirth. So we were very surprised at that. And eventually, <clears throat> when the Fraternas came here from Peru, they thought the procession was very small here. They wanted to, what they do in Peru. So this big statue was bought. It's really grown over the years. And of course, the Irish community have got involved as well. Very much so. The Irish community involved at the very beginning. But as it caught on, more and more of them joined in the organisation as well, you know. And Tajan, for instance, is one of the chief organisers. Now, the procession is going to leave here. It's going to go around the roads for about a couple of miles, yeah. and then it's going to end up. Is there a service in Platfields Park then? Yes, there's a prayers of incense. The rose is going to be said in a hymn song all the way. And then when we get to Platfields, there's a concluding ceremony and blessing by the bishop. Thank you for joining us this morning, Father. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou in the women. And blessed is the fruit of the Bible of Jesus. And what a lovely morning and what a great turnout we've got here for the Marian procession. Absolutely, Martin. It's unbelievable when you consider the terrible weather we've been having. Now, you've put a lot of effort and time and everything into organising this and you've been heavily involved for many years. Yeah, we have. And, of course, the fraternals, who were the leaders of it, had to leave this year. They've, they've, all, they've left England and they've gone to other countries, Australia, various countries throughout the world. So um, we were the original organising committee and we took it over. It was either that or it was going to be let drop and it was such a shame to let it go when we had so many like, loyal volunteers and people. So we've just taken it over and I was voted the chair for my sins. So, um, but I'd like to say to the Matt Mullen family because unfortunately I had a death in the family, I was in Ireland for a month. So the Matt Mullen family really stepped up to the mark and um, did so much work, which you know the four of them literally were doing everything because you know, I wasn't here to do it. And of course the Whitwalks used to be so big in Manchester down the years and a big Irish contingent. Yeah. Absolutely lovely, I mean we always remember when we were children we had such a great time and then you go into the Blackbird Cafe for chips afterwards and all the rest of it. It was such a great occasion. So it's nice to see, and the Italians of course still do their procession as well. So it's nice to sort of see it. We're hoping that maybe now, which this is the Marian Procession Manchester, but we're hoping we might next year start one in Shrewsbury as well and spread it around, do the evangelization that uh, His Holiness has asked us all to do. So, and we get great support here. This is like, it was quite, um, now has become quite a, a Muslim area because there's a lot of um, takeaways and shops and everything here. And they are so supportive. We're a week later than normal this year. And so many of them have been saying to us, what has happened? Where is the parade? You know, sure it was last week. And like we said, no, no, don't worry. It's this week. So, you know, we've had so much support, so much sponsorship from them. We've had more sponsorship in fairness from a lot of the Muslims than we have from like, you know, these sort of Christian communities. So well done and thank you to everyone. So it's a real um, sort of unilateral uh, multinational affair this year. And of course, it's a great occasion to celebrate our faith as well. Absolutely. His Holiness has been asking that we go out and sort of celebrate. And it's lovely to walk through. And we get such a great reception when we walk down the road and cars beeping and singing. And in fact, one year we went into the park where we gather and right next to there's a big football pitch and there was two football teams playing. And suddenly they stopped and it was Faith of Our Fathers. Next thing they all stood and started singing Faith of Our Fathers with us. So it was like, just stop the game, you know. So it was really, people do appreciate it. So that's nice. What a lovely occasion and well done to everybody who came along to support it. Now next up we are going to catch up with Jack Fleming who is celebrating his birthday. 
Jack and his dad Patrick Fleming does a lot of work for the Irish community in Alfreton. Patrick, it's a very special night for you, of course, celebrating your young Jack's 18th birthday. Yes, it is. Uh, I thought he'd never get there sort of thing, and I'm delighted to the fact he's turned out really well. You know, he's uh, very proud of him. Uh, and to make it extra special, he uh, passed his test three weeks ago and was on the ferry, uh, and drove all the way from Balahadreen here to Alfreton. I uh, got, got here in the early hours of Thursday morning. He's a lovely lad. He's extremely quiet and shy, though. We couldn't get him on the TV tonight. No, he's... Um, when he was a lot younger, we used to have, used to have great sing-songs himself, his sister Tara and myself. No matter where we went, over here or back home in Ireland, he'd be singing along. He was telling me he's really enjoying living in Ireland and he loves the country life. Yes. Yeah, he loves it down there and he's a big supporter of Mayo, you know. Now, Patrick, you put on a lovely night here for him to celebrate his 18th party. It's a lovely venue and, of course, you've got great music as well. Yes, Paul Kelly is doing a, a great job. Um, I've known Paul now, he's played for us a few times down at Christ the King. Well, of course, you're involved in all things Irish down here in Alfred and you have been for many, many years promoting Irish uh, songs and music. Five years at it now since I started back. They're, uh, just the, the, um, the 13th of last month, September, and uh, we had Tom Healy play for that night, and sadly, Tom is not in the, in the best of health anymore. But yeah, he put on a great night, just as Paul is doing here for us now, and we've had some great artists in that five-year period. People love the dancing, as I do myself, whereas I will travel, I don't, not, don't care where I have to go for a good dance, well, of course, we send our best wishes to Tom Healy, of course, for a speedy recovery. We're all thinking about him. And listen, Patrick, thank you so much. You put on a great night tonight. It's great to speak to you once again. Thank you very much, Martin and Annette, for coming down here. Without you and what you do for the Irish community here in the UK, we'd be lost. Lisa, are you enjoying the night? Yeah, it's a fantastic evening. Lots of friends here. Yeah, lots of friends and lots of family as well. Now, you were born here, but you live in Roscommon. Tell me, how did that happen? I was, yeah. I was born in Sheffield and went over to Ireland, Boyle County, Roscommon, and met an Irish man, um, married him, so all settled. Would you ever think about coming back to Sheffield? Um, no, definitely not, no. no. Maybe, maybe I would if I didn't have children, because um, I do miss the family. Uh, how long are you over for, Lisa? Um, I'm over for two weeks, so... It was originally for the weekend, but I've kind of extended the stay. Listen, Lisa, it's been great to catch up with you tonight. I hope you enjoy your stay here in Sheffield, and I hope you live many, many happy years in County Roscoe. Uh, music a long time. Uh, I was always, I think like I started playing the guitar when I was four and then got a keyboard from Santi maybe the year afterwards and developed on from that and I suppose I kind of self-taught myself the keyboard and I learned the guitar from a, a Frankie McKeeran which is a well-known guitarist in Bundorn and then my mother was happened to be, she was in a two-piece band so uh, I remember well I was starting secondary school the next day and the fella played in the band with her fell and broke his leg so I was just thrown into the deep end and Guess what, I'm at it since. And of course you're really busy now with the band, aren't you? Yeah, busy with the band, yes. I do a radio programme three days a week in Sligo as well on Ocean FM. And myself and Andy Cox write a lot of, write a lot of our own songs. And of course we've written a couple of other songs for different singers as well. We do a show on Spotlight, it's on uh, every Thursday evening at a half past seven. It's called Kelly Talks Country. And again, it's based around uh, 
country farming and talking to country folk and so on like that. So uh, it's interesting enough, you know. There is a, a touch of a farmer lost in you somewhere, isn't there, Paul? Because I've looked at some of your videos and you do a lot of farming videos. I am a farmer since I remember when I was going to school. I always had to milk the cows in the morning. And then we were uh, heavily involved in sheep farming. The farming songs has really kicked it kind of off for me. Even in the UK then, we've done another song. It's called Tangs Holland. And Tangs Holland's all about lorry drivers. So we've been over doing a, a big uh, dance there for Eddie Stobart's son, William, uh, there a few weeks ago over near Manchester. That's fantastic. And of course you're here tonight in Alfreton for a very special occasion, Young Jack's 18th. I want to wish Jack there a very, very happy birthday as well. Great dancing crowd and Martin, I better get back on stage. I'm sick of sucking diesel on this old farm of mine. I'm gonna sell her cheap, me boys, and have a good old time. The tractor is up on Dundee, the farm gone buy and sell. The cows ate all my silage and the weather's gone to hell. I give us 70, 80 or 90 grand Come on me boys, put up your hand She's on the market, 92 Stand on Leonard, she's with you 98, now fill her up 99, you'll get some luck 100 grand, the hammer is down Well done Leonard, you bought the ground Jack is a lovely young man and he had a wonderful birthday celebration with his family and many of his friends. Now it's time for us to take a little break. Welcome back. Now we're off to Parkna here in Birmingham for the Warwickshire Senior Football Championship Final between Sean McDermott's of Birmingham and Roger Casements of Coventry. Both these teams have met for the last four years in the Warwickshire final and Sean McDermott's have come out on top each time. In fact, Sean McDermott's are going for six in a row this year. So let's see what happened. Anthony, many congratulations, of course, five in the row already in the bag. That's right, yeah, we're going for number six today. Yeah, it's a, it'd be a massive achievement if we can get it. I was looking at your line-up today, and you've got a lot of homegrown players as well. We have, yeah, I'd say 95% of our starting line-up and, and our squad would be of homegrown talent, yeah, so it's fellas that have come through the ranks and have been with us a long time. It's a great testament to the underage system that you've got here at Sean McDermott, that you've got so many people coming through from the underage. That's right, yeah, we're solid right through uh, underage. We've got plenty of teams right for, from under sevens all the way through to under 21s and we like to bring them fellas through all the time. So, yeah, no, it's, it's great that they stay with us and stick at it and proofs in the pudding there now with the fellas that's making up the senior, senior team. So, yeah, it's great. How many players have you got playing here today in the team that played last year and the year before? Everyone that's part of this squad today played last year. And Connell, you're captain of course today. Uh, you'll be giving a good pep talk to uh, to the lads before they go out on the pitch. Yeah, I'll let Anthony say all the tactical sort of stuff and then when it's time to go, I'll just give the boys the one final la last push there before we start. Yeah. Now, of course, it's it's a big, quite a bit of pressure on you guys today, isn't there really? You've won the five in a row, you'd like to do the six. Of course, you're making history. Yeah, of course, we don't think about it like that. We don't think, we don't live in the past. It's all about today really, isn't it? And Niall, uh, you're vice captain of course today. Are you another homegrown player? I am, yeah. I've been with them since about under eights. So, yeah. Me and Connell come through the youth all the way up together. So, looking forward to it. Bernard, tell me a little bit about the setup here at Sean McDermott. Well, Martin, you've arrived on a very good day today, so you have, because you're going to see the best of us today as we're going for our six in a row. We've got our seniors out here today. We have uh, the youth, we have all our supporters, and you will see the backbone of Sean McDermott's here today. Uh, as a club, we have under eights right up to under 21s, so we have. We've got ladies, we've got girls, 
and uh, we're actually starting back at uh, the hurling again this year where we have some mentors that have taken up upon themselves to reintroduce the great game of hurling back into our club and obviously homegrown is the way to to go and I mean you can see that in our football here today we've got 13 players uh, that are homegrown and have played underage for Sean McDermott that are actually starting uh, in that final today. So, you know, it's very much providence in our club that we bring them through early on. The army of uh, people that are behind all the underage structure and setup. We run a very successful Coley Forlum tournament as well, where we're bringing teams back from Ireland. We're bringing them from all over the UK. And, uh, you know, you, you, you'll see that today in our presentation. Noel, tell me what uh, Sean McDermott was like when you first joined back in the 60s. Ah, we were a we were reasonably weak club, like, you know, starting from remnants of just junior hurling, then junior football, and trying to get up the ranks to senior level. We had some tremendous officers that joined us in that period, from the 60s and into the 70s, and then we developed a side in the 70s, well, unbeatable, but really. Won seven on the bounce in championship here, senior championship here in Warwickshire at that time, which was tremendous competition. We won three club championships of Britain, and at that time I also won three club awards. The flow of players in were great, and the standard was awesome. And that time we were at senior level. We'd be playing club championship in Ireland as well at senior level. And look at the level of competition now. You can win a junior All-Ireland, an intermediate All-Ireland, and a senior All-Ireland club. And to walk them steps in Croke Park must be the best thing you could ever happen to. Now, Michelle, of course, you're following in your father's footsteps here, and you're secretary of Sean McDermott. Yes, I am. We're born into the club, really. We were just brought out here as babies, really, and just continued to come out. Um, Dad would miss our Holy Communion, everything for Gaelic, so we, we just love we just loved the game. We just loved McDermott's. Yeah. And, of course, being secretary for a club like this, it's a busy job, isn't it? I've done it for 23 years now, so it's just... I, I don't know what I'm doing, and... Um, I'm good at rearing up on the players and getting them out to matches and training. And of course, Michelle, it's a lovely family day out here. Your dad's here with you and the rest of, uh, of your family. Now I'm going to speak to younger supporters from Sean McDermott. That's Cora. Who's your favourite player, Cora? Um, Connor Dowlin, Liam Gilbert and Declan Stoughton. And what about you, Connor? What about your favourite player? Um, my favourite player is Noel Gilbert. OK, and of course your dad is chairman of the club, isn't he? Yeah. Well, look, enjoy the game today. Thanks. Mark, a really close game here at halftime, 2 4 to 1 4 in favour of Sean McDermott. Yeah, it's, it's what we expected now. These t two teams have been the kind of the two best teams in the county over the last number of years. This is the third final in a row that they've, um, you know, plied, plied against one another. Obviously, casements have the man advantage, but they're a goal down. And look, Max have been here before. They're going for the six in a row. They know how to win games. Well, yeah, and it was a great game in the first half, even though it's so windy here. But, you know, it didn't seem to affect the players. No, it, it's, again, testament to the skill base that's in these players. And what's, what's fantastic about this, when you look at the team lists, that but 90% uh, of the players on show here today are British-born players, that they are Warwickshire born and bred, and they've come up through the ranks of Sean McDermott's and Roger Casements. So you have to congratulate both clubs and their underage structure and holding on to players, which we find in all of our clubs around in the Warwickshire is, uh, is, is the key question. How can we hang on to those players and get them into the senior ranks? The model is Sean McDermott's and Roger Casements, and the, the fruit of their hard work has been seen today. Now, Mark, tell me where you're up to with the, with the new road that's coming through your grounds here. I know you've been through a tough battle over the last few years. Yeah, it's almost three years now since we got the notification that Pitch 2, which is behind me here, uh, will turn into a dual carriageway come 2020. So, needless to say, we've worked very hard. We've had a very, very strong political lobby behind us, lots of support. And I'm happy to say now we're very, very close to a very good agreement whereby Highways England will be delivering a brand new clubhouse, a brand new 4G pitch and a brand new sand base pitch which we will hope to be you know the benchmark for Gaelic games outside of the island of Ireland.
Paddy, the Warwickshire Championship final, a big game today for you. Yeah, it's a big game for the club. Yeah, We've had a great season so far and hopefully we'll uh, go all the way in the Championship today. It's been tough now. We've come up against Max the last three years and uh, we came short last year by two points and uh, it was a hard one to take really. So we're determined to go one better this year and uh, bring the cup back to Coventry. Yeah, of course, there's great history in your club, isn't there? And it's it's been going since the 1950s. Yeah, it was formed by um, a Fermanagh man, a Dublin man, and a, a, a Kildare man uh, in 1956 in uh, Our Lady Assumption Club in Coventry. And uh, we had a couple of different homes over the year, but uh, we've been based at the Sphinx in Coventry now for the last 10 years, and it's been a great godsend to us, really. I'm really impressed by the amount of homegrown players you've got. Yeah, along with ourselves and probably Sean McDermott, we were probably the two strongest cl clubs, uh, mainly probably in Britain with the with the underage structures that we have. Um, we've both clubs were fielding from under sixes all the way up through, and uh, we've been working hard at it for the last 15, 20 years really. And it's great to see all the young lads from Coventry coming through the ranks. Now, Jack, of course, your team captain. It's a bit windy here today. How is that going to affect the game? Yeah, I mean, it'd be, be the same for both teams. So we, we probably won't try and think too much about the wind. Um, we just take as it comes. Now, there's been a huge amount of rain over the last few days and of course again last night the pitch is fairly heavy out there. Yeah, we were mindful of that. We sent out a text last night just to say make sure everyone has studs, make sure everyone has gloves, but we're prepared for all eventualities. Now Michael, a leash man, how did you get involved with Roger Casement? Um, well, it's a funny story actually. I was looking for a club and didn't know the best way to find it so I went on Google and I googled hurling in, uh, in Warwickshire and Casement was the first club to come up. So. I found uh, Chris Lennon's number on the on the website and gave him a call. So, so you played hurling down here in Warwickshire as well? Yes, yeah. Last year was the first year I played for the county. Thought about playing for the previous two years, but just didn't think I could give the commitment. And one of the lads encouraged me to go down for one session, and I loved it. Now you're on the sidelines today, of course. I know you've got an injury. I think it'll be a seriously tight game. I'd absolutely love to be out there today. It's uh, There's a massive rivalry between ourselves and Max, um, and I think we should be there thereabouts by the end of the game. Hopefully we can get the win. What a fantastic game of football and well done to both teams on putting on such a sporting occasion. There was nothing between the teams all the way through the game. But congratulations to Sean McDermott on running out winners by 3 goals 5 pints to 1 goal 10 pints. Sean McDermott have been champions for the 6th year in succession. What a great sporting occasion and well done to Roger Casements. I'm sure they'll be back next year. Well, that brings us to the end of the show for this week. Henry McGlade is back with his show next Thursday evening at 7 o'clock and we are here with the Irish in the UK at 7.30. Until then, thank you for watching.